Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Islamic State expanding footprints in South Asia. India bans 14 mobile messenger apps for their alleged role in spreading terrorism on Indian soil. And security forces neutralized two LED terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's begin the show. The Islamic State, also known as Daesh with its roots in Iraq and Syria, was founded by Abu Muzab al Zawahiri in 1999. The terrorist Islamist group, which follows the Salafi jihadist branch of Sunni Islam, gained global prominence in 2014 and rapidly spreads its footprint in South Asia, the region with a large Muslim population. A recent leaked document has revealed Islamic State using Afghanistan as its safe haven to operate and target important installations in Europe, Asia and United States. A report. Recent deadly attacks by the Islamic State in South Asia, including Pakistan, Afghanistan and India, indicate the growing presence of ISIS in the region. According to leaked Pentagon memos, ISIS is re-emerging in Afghanistan and plotting attacks across Europe, Asia, and aspirational plots against the United States. The leaked memos indicated that specific targets included churches, embassies, and business centers. According to the Washington Post, which was the first outlet to report the news, ISIS has coordinated 15 specific plots from Afghanistan since the U.S. withdrawal in 2021. The deadly suicide bomb at Kabul International Airport in August of 2021, for example, which killed 13 U.S. service members, was set off by an ISIS member. We may talk about ISIS targeting uh, targets in Afghanistan, but when it comes to state stability, especially the stability of Taliban government, the Taliban government believes that these attacks do not disturb it at all. Yes, when they do uh, uh, attempt to attack uh, Taliban or the state, the state of Afghanistan, then the Taliban does take action and takes severe action. So, so far what we have seen is a jugal bandi of sorts where the ISIS keeps on targeting Shias largely and the Taliban is more or less comfortable with it. The Newsline's Institute, a US-based think tank, says that ISIS in South Asia is concerned with recruiting for the Khorasan branch and thus seeks to leverage online networks and local politics to form cells and conduct sporadic attacks. The group poses the greatest threat in Afghanistan and Pakistan, countries reeling from decades of war, insurgency, weak governance, and political instability, further complicated by difficult topography. All power vacuums will always lead to this kind of a terrorist organization coming up, irrespective of where it is. Now, the question of course is, could America, America went in to block that power vacuum. After 20 years, you know, losing the war, uh, I mean, what were they realistically meant to do? Uh, it was, uh, you know, they, they just can't keep throwing troops and money into a war which isn't going anywhere. So they had to kind of move out. I don't think the power vacuum this time is as big as it was the last time. The last time the Taliban literally allowed things to happen and that is why they lost their state. The Islamic State has a massive presence in Pakistan's Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa provinces, which share borders with Afghanistan. These provinces have witnessed frequent terror attacks by ISIS, as the outfit wants to establish its prominence in the region. In March, a suicide bombing by the Islamic State in the Sibi area of Balochistan killed nine policemen. The outfit has also been involved in carrying out terror attacks in India's Jammu and Kashmir, especially targeting the security forces in that region. The existence of the Islamic State in the region is a wake-up call, as the outfit has already announced the Islamic State of Hind province in May of 2019. The Islamic State's growth in these regions indicates that the Islamist group may aim to launch a violent campaign when conditions are suitable. Countries in the South Asian region, and world over, 
as well as international organizations and groups, must remain watchful of ISIS operations and make attempts to curb their growth by drawing attention to their tactics, leaders, and methods of financing. The threat of terror is a real one in South Asia, and concerted and coordinated efforts are required to curb terrorism and violence. Moving on. The government of India banned 14 mobile applications in Jammu and Kashmir that might have been used to establish communication channels between Pakistani handlers and terrorists for executing the Poonch terror attack that took lives of five Indian army personnel. The security force, Jammu and Kashmir Police and National Investigation Agency, NIA, are on hunt for the perpetrators of the heinous terror attack. We have a report. Pakistan's digital terror designs suffered a setback as the government of India banned 14 mobile applications after exposing their insidious role in furthering terror. As per the information made available by Indian investigative agencies, these applications, which have no official presence in India, were being used to establish communication channels between terrorists, their Pakistan handlers and their overground workers in the Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The applications that have been pulled from all operating systems include WIC RME, Mediafire, Briar, Bchat, Nandbox, Konyan, IMO, Element, Second Line, Zangi, Threema, Creepwiser, Enigma, and Safe Swiss. These apps are available with the steeper cells within Jammu and Kashmir. So the handlers are giving the information to the terrorists in India that how you have to operate. They are getting, and whatever the movements these sleeper cells have to report about Indian forces and Indian security system and Indian political system, they forward it to the app. These apps are very productive, very efficient, and they are now creating mayhem. They are in Jammu and Kashmir. It means not only the app handlers are there, the providers are there, the sleeper cells, the providers of ammunition, providers of finances, they all are there, normal administrators, overground workers. Post India's abrogation of Article 370, a rattled Pakistan had spun a number of narratives that questioned Indian decision of suspending internet services from the region. It has now become clear why Pakistan was desperately pushing the resume internet campaigns its vicious plots had come to a screeching halt. Pakistan once again sprang into action as soon as the threat perception in the territory came down. The mobile applications that maintain a person's anonymity have become crypting tools of communication between terror outfits. In the aftermath of the Poonch terror attack, the alleged use of mobile applications by locals, overground workers and terrorists has again heightened the security challenges. India has also arrested six terror operatives, including an entire family who were operating on instructions of LET and were providing logistical support to the terrorists who ambushed the army truck at Tola Gali in Punch on April 20. Local support ke bagair is tarah ki karwai jo hai usko naam nahi diya ja sakta. Abhi bhi is mein jo humne pakta hai, maadiyon pura jo involved hai, jo unko pichle do tin mahine se mukammal support de raha hai, nisar aur uska family jo parwar ke log jo ration pani har tarah ki sunda hai, inki jo faram kar rahe the, jo provide kar rahe the, inka jo Pakistan se saman drone ke jariye se aaya tha, wo bhi utha ke laya aur inko mahiya kiya gaya aur inko diya gaya. उसमें कैश भी शामिल था, उसमें असलम रोनिशन भी शामिल था, बाकी चीजें भी इनके जीवन की शामिल थी, ग्रेनेड भी शामिल थे, तो ऐसी जो लोकल सपोर्ट है, उसकी निशानदेही हम लोग कर रहे हैं। Out of six locals apprehended for allegedly helping the terrorists, three have been identified by the police as Nisar Ahmad, Farid Ahmad, and Mustaq. Nearly 200 locals have been questioned regarding the terrorist activity, and more names are yet to come out. Security forces and the Jammu and Kashmir police have been put on high alert in the region. The National Investigation Agency has also been deployed in the region. 
The agency has raided multiple locations in Jammu and Kashmir and the twin border districts of Punch and Rajouri are on high alert too. The blocking of the 14 mobile applications should prove to be a major crackdown on the critical communication channels used by Pakistani terrorists. It also underlines the misuse of the internet in the valley and once again raises the question of whether certain applications and high-speed internet should have been made accessible to all the people in the valley. Terror factories in Pakistan and along the line of control in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir continue to infiltrate terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. The objective is to incite violence in the Union territory at the behest of the Pakistan's army and the ISI. However, Indian security forces are vigilant enough to respond appropriately. In the latest operation, security forces eliminated two Lashkar terrorists in Baramala district of the region. Park back terrorists with the support of their mentors across the borders have unleashed a reign of terror on innocent civilians in Jammu and Kashmir. Today, even as the people of the region yearn for peace, the state has been stained with the blood of innocence. However, the Indian security forces have done the yeoman service to the nation by a way of successful counter-terrorist operations. In the latest, security forces neutralized two dreaded Lashkar terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir's Baramula district. Acting on a piece of specific information regarding the presence of terrorists in the district, Jammu and Kashmir police and security forces launched a joint cordon and search operation in the area. During the search operation, as the joint search party approached towards a suspected spot, the hiding terrorists fired indiscriminately upon the joint search party, which was retaliated effectively, leading to an encounter. Police identified the slain ultras as Shakir Majid Najir and Hanan Ahmed Seh. Police also recovered incriminating materials, arms and ammunition, AK-47 rifle and a pistol from the site of the encounter. दौरान सर्च एक घर से हमारे पार्टीज पे फायरिंग की हुई जवाब फायरिंग में जो है दो दहशतगर्द मारे गए हैं और इनकी पोजीशन से एक AK47 राइफल और एक पिस्टल भी बरामद हुआ है ये दोनों दहशतगर्द जो है ये शोपियन जिले के रहने वाले हैं और किसी बड़ी दहशतगर्दाना कार्रवाई को अंजाम देने के लिए वो बारामुला जिले में आए थे the situation in Jammu and Kashmir has shown a considerable improvement, symbolizing a return to normalcy. The security environment has considerably shifted in the favor of security forces. The terrorists have suffered heavy attrition and simultaneously have not been able to replenish their dwindling cadres due to the effectiveness of the counter-infiltration measures. This has led to a sharp decline in the violence inflicted by terrorists. Counter-terror data reveals that the total number of terror-related incidents has come down from 417 in 2018 to 110 up to September 30, 2022, with 255 incidents in 2019, 244 in 2020, 228 in the entire 2021 and 90 up to September 30, 2022. The Indian security forces are framing strategies for uprooting the terror ecosystem to consolidate peace in the region. In Pakistan, the religion is deeply meshed with politics. And this is the reason that when dreaded terrorists and terrorist organizations roam freely in Pakistan for fundraising activities in the name of religion and to wage a war against India, the Pakistani government cannot do anything. It is the support of the Pakistani government to these fanatic religious organizations which has created immense trouble for India. These terrorists roam freely because they have the state patronage of the Pakistani government and the Pakistani army. People in Kashmir have understood that terrorism and separatism cannot flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. For Pakistan, which has been attempting to internationalize the Kashmir issue for more than seven decades, this is the worst suffering.
the notorious intelligence agency of Pakistan, ISI, aims to reawaken the fear of being killed in the minds of ordinary Kashmiris. However, such heinous terror activities will not be able to undermine the advancement of Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on, Pakistan's primacy in the international narcotics trade and the funding of terrorist activities has been time and again confirmed by several investigation agencies worldwide. There are clear indications that Pakistan-based terrorist networks have stepped up their activities on the Indo-Pakistan international border. The seizure of huge quantities of heroin from Pakistani drugs peddlers have shown how narco-terror has become a major concern for the law enforcing agencies in India. A report. Pakistan is using narco-terrorism as a new weapon in its proxy war against India. It is an integral component of Pakistan's state sponsorship of cross-border terrorism used so as to fund and conduct asymmetric warfare against its neighbors. Of late, Islamabad has used a dual strategy of sending drugs as well as weapons to keep the conflict alive and tear the core of the valley's social fabric. Heroin smuggled from Pakistan is the most widely used opioid all over Kashmir. Furthermore, narcotic trafficking is emerging as a global threat as it has a strong alliance with terrorist groups as cross-border smuggling of narcotics provides oxygen to terrorism via finances and if not curbed immediately could ruin the lives of the region's youth. It is important uh, that at the grassroots level one will have to continue with education and with properly explaining to the people the dangers of the drugs because this drug and terrorism are interlinked and youth if it gets caught into that bind it is going to be an extremely difficult situation to deal with. Indian officials have reported drones coming in from Pakistan to drop weapons and drugs for terrorists in Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir and Rajasthan. Last year till November at least 22 such drones were reported captured by Indian agencies and 266 drone infiltrations were reported during the year. On March 24, BSF personnel recovered five Austria-made Glock pistols and more than 90 rounds of various caliber bullets along the international border in Punjab. The same day, another large cache of arms was discovered in a packet near the international border. On March 11th, BSF personnel recovered a 3 kilogram bag of heroin in Amritsar. On the 10th, the BSF recovered arms, ammunition and contraband items in Punjab's Gurdaspur. Irene Boy drones made in China and used by Pakistan transport everything from assault rifles and pistols to military-grade explosive RDX, IEDs such as stiffen bombs, drugs and counterfeit currency. As far as uh, Pakistan is concerned, it deploys all kind of tricks and tactics from terrorism to narco-terrorism against India. And uh, it is not the first time that this is happening. We have seen that Pakistan uh, army also started even dealing with drug paddling long ago and was earning even as much as nearly $8 billion. And this is a recorded fact. Now, the fact that they are dropping arms or sometimes they drop uh, material and uh, drugs and all in the valley and elsewhere, uh, that is a very serious uh, concern and it should be, it's a, it's a problem for the authorities because we know that now with the advent of greater technologies, we are finding it is uh, like the drone, it is a low cost option and it, it uh, helps them and the deniability is also there. So therefore, it is absolutely important that there should be an international uh, collaboration in this, which should be increased against Pakistan's activities. Frequent park drone incursions are seen as systematic out of a frustration arising out of terrorist infiltration drastically pulled down. Besides that, they imply lower costs and fewer terrorist lives in danger. 
security analysts are concerned that this will be India's most difficult challenge on the Western Front in the future. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.